In this section, we're going to be talking about the gradient. Now, this is directly related to the slope, and in many countries, the slope is actually called a gradient. But here, we're talking about the gradient vector field of a scalar function. Don't get upset. These aren't really big. These are just big words for things we know about. Of f, where f is a function of x, y, z, and maybe some more variables, is the vector field, and we denote it by grad f, and the other notation is to use the symbol, an upside down delta, which we call del of f. And all it is is a vector, so we're going to use vector notations because it's a vector field. And it's the first derivative of f with respect to the first variable. And then the second component is the sec first derivative of f with respect to the second variable and then the first derivative of f with respect to the third variable, etc. This is Cartesian notation. So it's, it's delta f, delta x times i, right? That would be the first component, plus delta f, delta y times j, plus delta f, delta z, times k, and if there's more, there's more, and if there's less, there's less. So what does that mean? Scalar function. What is a scalar function? It's what you know. It really is. It's a real valued function. It's a function that gives you a real number. So there's dots here, but we could just start with x. So this could just be x. So let's look at that. That would be the case r1 to r. This is the part that always has to be r. That's the real value part. So we're going to start with an example. f of x equals x plus 2 times sine of x. Function, you know lots of things to do. You can take its derivative. You can find its extreme values. You know how to do this function. And then we're going to move on to the next ones, right, where we go up one level. And we have a function of two variables, but it always goes to r. That's the real value part, right? This part here. And we're going to look at that. And so it has two variables. So it x, y. And I think we start with the function that we know a lot about, x squared plus y squared. Then we will work on a function defined for x, y, and z, but still real valued. So we would have x of x, y, z here equals picked one yet to work on, x, y, z. Okay, what is the use of a gradient field, a gradient vector field? The vectors of the gradient always point in the direction of function growth. So if you can find the, the vector and draw it, you know in which direction the function is growing. Also, the magnitude of the vectors of the gradient is that is the rate of growth. So you look at the vector, see where it's pointing, you know in which direction it's growing, you look at the magnitude of that vector, and you will know the rate of growth. There is a technicality when you try to draw a vector field, the vectors start to overlap each other. They have greater magnitude than the distance between the ones you're drawing. So what they do is in order to avoid overlapping when drawing, the vectors are usually scaled down. So they're all multiplied by like, say, a third or a tenth or something like that. And what it is, is if you think about uh, these two functions that you know how to think about, it's like you're squishing them down. This one you would be squishing down by y. And then when you want to break it back up, you, you, you rescale and you pull it back up. So, and the same thing here. This one, it's like you're smooshing down the z component. And then when you want to do it correctly, if you multiply by that scale, you can unsmush the function. And we'll show you what that means as we go along. So hang in there and it, it will be understandable.